Last video, we set up AFL to fuzz the sudo binary in order to rediscover the sudo edit vulnerability. So let's have a look at the results. As you can see, the fuzzing campaign has been running for over 24 hours now, and we seem to have some crashes. Maybe we actually found the sudo edit vulnerability. So let's investigate those crashes. AFL stores all the inputs that crash the binary in the out folder. In my case, it's in slash TMP. Because I ran AFL in parallel, you can find four folders based on their name in there. In each of these folders is a folder named crashes, and that contains the crashing inputs. So let's look at the first crash input with hex dump. And there it is. Remember, this file format has to be seen as if they were arguments for sudo. It's basically a null byte separated list of arguments. And the first one should be the program name. But this test case is neither sudo nor sudo edit. So could it have even found the sudo edit vulnerability? We can also grab through all the crashing inputs, checking if AFL found any crash with sudo edit, but we find nothing. Huh, not what I was hoping for. But we did find some crashes. So there is a chance we found another zero day in sudo. Let's investigate. As a first test, we can just cut one of the example crashes into our fuzzing sudo binary, and we can confirm it crashes the binary. Segmentation fault. Cool. To understand where exactly it crashes, we should let it crash with GDB attached. By the way, I installed pwn debug in this container to get a bit nicer GDB output. Just copy and paste those install instructions and you should have it too. Now we run the binary and we pipe one of the crashes in. There we go. And we crash because of AFL init argv in buff. AFL init argv is from the header file we added. And in there we have a in buff that holds the fake argv arguments. What the heck? If you look a bit around with GDB, looking at where we came from before we jumped here, we can see that indeed we crashed inside of sudo and we find a call rax in sudo warrant get text v1. That's weird, I'm suspicious. Before we go further with this, I wanted to create a small proof of concept that crashes regular sudo, not the AFL instrumented sudo, the actual sudo on the system. Because if it crashes regular sudo, then we know the crash is legit. If not, we know something is wrong. But to do that, we have to turn this crash file into actual arguments and execute sudo. But that's pretty simple. We can actually reuse the argv fuzz inline header file for that. We basically create a small execve wrapper that I call afl to sudo, where we use the afl init argv macro to get a fake argv, and then we can execve the real sudo binary, but pass in the fake argvs. So now we execute sudo with the malicious arguments. When we compile this, now we should be able to run a basic test by specifying sudo and, for example, the minus l argument with those null byte separators. And yes, it looks like our wrapper works. We indeed called sudo with the minus L argument. Now, let's try the crash file. We cut and pipe it into the sudo wrapper. And boom, segmentation fault. I think we found a new zero day. Let's investigate with GDB. We debug our AFL sudo wrapper program and pipe in the crash input. But damn, we crash inside our wrapper program. If you look at where we crashed, you see we crashed inside the AFL init argv function. We didn't even make it to the execve to execute sudo. It looks like we have some bugs in the AFL fake argv setup stuff. God damn it. How annoying is that? So I did a quick check and added this debug printf where each loop I print some variable values. And when I compile and execute that, I noticed that RC is counting very high, over 1000 even though max command line par is only set to 1000s. So we are actually causing here a buffer overflow, which means we are writing pointers from our fake argv into some other memory. And this explains the crash we are seeing with AFL. The crash AFL found through fuzzing is a bug in AFL's experimental argv wrapper code. Our fake argvs are static buffers, so basically global variables. And so our input must have caused the loop to count RC very high, way out of bounds of the red array buffer, overriding a lot of global data, including a function pointer used by sudo warrant get text v1 
over writing it with a pointer of our fake argvs. This didn't immediately crash sudo, but in some conditions the sudo warn get text v1 function was executed using the bad pointer causing the crash. Anyway, we need to fix the argv wrapper, which is pretty simple. We just have to make sure that rc never gets above the max command line par value of 1000. If you reach that, we just bail out of the loop. Okay, this should fix our false positive crashes. Now let's recompile the sudo binary again and set up fuzzing. But instead of parallel fuzzing the same setup, I thought we could do some additional experiments. The first fuzzer I start is the same. I'm just adding two more test cases. You can see here I added a set of different sudo argument flags that I took from the sudo help page. Just so AFL can use some correct arguments for fuzzing. Hopefully this fuzzer finds a different functionality with sudo edit and then finds the crash. Besides this, I want to get another independent fuzzing instance going, but have a test case that already includes sudo edit. So here I prepare the fuzzer with those test cases. This fuzzer should find the crash much faster because AFL already knows about sudo edit. But that's not all. For both these test cases we use AFL, original AFL. But I thought it would also be interesting to try out AFL++, which according to the README is a superior fork of Google's AFL. More speed, more and better mutations and more and better instrumentation. So I created another docker file. You can find it in the episode folder on GitHub. This image instead of AFL installs AFL++. Usage is pretty much the same, so we don't really need to change anything except that we use AFLCC as the compiler, as all the other variants like AFL Clang Fast are just symlinks to the same one. We just configure sudo to build with it and then make it as we did before. And now I use the same input test cases as we did for AFL. This means we end up with four different comparable fuzzing attempts. Let's start them. To summarize, these two fuzzers are vanilla AFL, but this one with only sudo test cases. And this one has also sudo edit test cases. The other two are AFL++, also with only sudo and then also sudo edit. I'm really curious to see how they differ. By the way, we haven't really looked at the AFL output yet, so let's use this opportunity really quick. Here you can see how long the fuzzing has been running. And information such as last new path or even last unique crash can really help to get a feeling for how well the fuzzing is going. Early in fuzzing, we of course expect constantly new paths to be discovered. If fuzzing hasn't found new paths in a long time, then maybe you can stop the fuzzer. But long time is relative. For some projects you might feel like two hours without a finding is too long and for other programs maybe just a week without findings is too long. There's no magic crystal ball that tells you if AFL found everything AFL can find. Here you can see the fuzzing speed. How many program executions do we get per second? And we have for all roughly 280 to maybe 300 execs per second. For me it's kind of crazy to think that we are executing the pseudo binary over 200 times per second. But maybe for larger fuzzing campaigns, this number is also extremely low. And of course, here it counts how many total executions we have completed so far. The other interesting output is findings in death. Here it shows you if you found any crashes. Of course, we have zero crashes so far, we just started. But for some really bad programs, you might immediately run into crashes. Or you run into crashes because your fuzzing setup is wrong, like the issue we talked about in this video. Timeouts are also interesting to look at. If the fast program runs into an endless loop or calculates something extensive that takes a while, a timeout might occur. I believe the default timeout is one second. So if this number would be crazy high, then maybe you need to fine tune the timeout value or investigate what is causing it. Maybe you can slightly patch the target binary to not run into these timeout conditions. And regarding the other values, I'm not a fuzzing expert. I have no clue how to interpret the other values. I mean, I know that the fuzzing strategies down here refer to different ways the input is mutated between runs, but I couldn't say if any of these values are weird or interesting and if they give me any information that I can use to change something about the fuzzing. Anyway, let's let these fuzzers run for a bit and see what they come up with. By the way, if you want a server to run your own fuzzer, check out my affiliate link for Linode. You will get a $100 free credit so you can run a bit of fuzzing for free. Also, Linode has different plans and for fuzzing maybe a dedicated CPU plan makes sense. If you end up spending some money on Linode, I will get a small reward as well. If you want to support my videos directly, check out liveoverflow.com support.